Well, here in Ghana, the Cooperative Agricultural Producers and Marketing Association, Agro Group, is asking government to pass a new cooperative bill. According to the group, the current cooperative law is outmoded and does not address modern-day challenges. The new bill, when passed into law, is expected to address bottlenecks in the operations of cooperatives and related bodies. This came to light at Agro Group's stakeholder engagement at Ashaiman here in the Greater Accra region to discuss what is expected to go into the bill. There is more in this report. Currently, agriculture cooperatives in Ghana form about 70% of the total cooperative sector and generate employment for many people. These include raw material for export and domestic consumption. However, most of the agricultural cooperative societies over the years have been dormant. With a proposed bill, AgriCoop, among other things, would want to produce a percent of Ghana's export and domestic needs. Albert Boache from Ghana Cooperative Council shares how the current law limits cooperatives. We need to have the rights of our members. For example, we have the department controlling everything. He being the regulator at the same time the promoter. It's not, it's not done in any way. Government can regulate the activities of cooperatives and allow the cooperatives to be the promoters of their own game. Because I, I remember 2000, Kenya's government came here to help the cooperatives, came here to learn from Ghana cooperatives. And as I speak to you, Kenya contributes more than 50% to the GDP. So th this means that if we are allowed to operate as an independent body, we can achieve that. Consultant to AgriCorp, lawyer Gloria Fouibuedu says the bill must reflect international cooperative alliance principles. The cooperative law is basically, as it exists now, is 51 years old. And the stakeholders have seen some aspects which do not augur well for development. For example, the cumbersome process for registering a new cooperative. And as you know, cooperatives are made up of individual self-employed entrepreneurs who have pulled their resources together to produce and market their products in larger quantities for the benefit of their cooperatives themselves, their families and the nation. Member of AgriCorp, Reverend John T. Tekbe, is unhappy of a policy introduced two years ago. We believe uh, already that uh, the cooperative is working and there's no need of a war coming into being. What we want to see is that if there is anything that IDA can do is to assist uh, cooperative farmers, farmers at the Wenya, uh, organize them and let them know what they are to do, then coming in with a policy which they themselves don't understand, they themselves are going to be educated into. With the support of BUSAC Fund, the group is reviving its membership to help address challenges facing them. In the Ashanti region, commercial production of charcoal briquettes for domestic and industrial use has begun at Barmang. The private initiative spearheaded by Agricultural, Industrial and Commercial Products Limited and the One District One Factory Initiative is anticipated to reduce traditional charcoal use. Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry Robert Ahumkalinsi commissioned the factory over the weekend. Now that's and Sumensa has more in this report. Produced mainly from sawdust, coconut shell, bamboo, rice husk, and other waste materials, charcoal briquette is seen as a sustainable alternative to ordinary charcoal. Biomass materials are compressed into briquettes, which burn just like charcoal, but without harmful effects to the environment. The first phase of the factory will provide 50 direct and 100 indirect jobs to the local and other people. AICPL is already looking beyond the domestic market for its product. Al Haji Adam Sulemana is chief executive. Some key benefits from, a, from our operations would include environmental preservation and sustainability, creation of jobs for the district, and that's poverty alleviation, savings for domestic, commercial, and industrial uses of charcoal, because, because briquettes burn at least three hours longer than ordinary charcoal. Revenue generation for the government and forex earnings through our export activities. Our factory will produce three main products. The first product is biochar, which is an organic fertilizer that greatly improves soil for crop production. Thus, we are in a position to support the government's planting for food and jobs initiative with a supply of large quantities of biochar for farmers. The second and main product is a charcoal briquettes used for household 
and commercial as well as for industrial fuel purposes. AICPL is collaborating with Council for Scientific and Industrial Research on how to deploy wood vinegar, one of the factory's byproducts in elimination of fall armyworm. Finally, our third product is called wood vinegar. It is a byproduct of the carbonization process in the production of biochar. Several studies have since proved that wheat, wood vinegar is effective against bacteria, fungi, and termites. Currently, we are collaborating with scientists from the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research on how to deploy wood vinegar effectively, particularly in the eradication of the army worm menace. And by June 2020, inshallah, AICPL in turn adding activated charcoal to our production line to supply the mining, water treatment, oil and gas, pharmaceutical and other sectors. Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry Robert Ahumkalinse urges the company to look beyond the Ghana and the West African market. The system of our economy which is based on the export of raw materials and the import of finished goods is simply not enough appropriate for 30 million Ghanaians. It just will not create enough jobs and wealth to take care, particularly of our youth. In the absence of that, we have to change the very essence, the structure of our industrial base. We have to stop being a nation that imports products and become a nation that manufactures products. Nana Asensu Mensa, reporting. Now to a very important story we've been following for you the whole of today. The Bank of Ghana today commenced a pilot operation to enforce the foreign exchange laws of the country after it realized that some companies have failed to comply. On the first day of the operation, many businesses and forex bureaus in the airport business enclave have failed to comply uh, well worn to desist from the practice or face the law. Ebenezer Sabote uh, joins me in the studio with more from uh, the ac action embarked upon by the team from uh, the Bank of Ghana. Thanks for joining me in studio, Eben. So let's begin with the location for the exercise, which is the airport business enclave. That is where foreigners touch yeah. base once they land into the yeah, country. Exactly, sure. uh, tell me about where you went today. So we were at the Holiday Inn. We went in there to check with the Forex Bureau there. You know in the hotel they have a Forex Bureau. Mm. First of all, we went to check at the Forex Bureau. And then from there, we check with the rates for the hotels as well. So at the Forex Bureau, we realized that the lady there uh, was not charging, uh, was not taking, sorry, the uh, necessary document that it was supposed, she was supposed to take. So if you are transacting business or you are changing foreign currency, maybe you have dollar on you and you want CD, mm. they will have to take your ID, either national ID, passport, voter's ID, or any of the national ID cards, you know. But this lady did ask for it. So after the transaction and the official asked her, that you're supposed to take all this and why? Then she began to fumble, have to explain herself, call her bosses and all that to explain issues to the officials. But they couldn't punish her because today's exercise is a pilot one just to educate the people that we are coming after you and this is how we are going to go about it if you fail to comply with the law we'll deal with you then we moved to the hotel itself and there we realized that they were charging the quotations were in cities mm. even though there are instances where people say some of the clients say they charge them in dollars but the quotations were in cities and then also we were not able to uh, verify whether indeed they were paying in dollars mm. but they told us that yes the quotations were in cities and they take cd cd of the the charge all right well. and so earlier you pointed out that uh, in your estimation about 70 yes. percent of uh, uh, businesses were, com were that's complying my <laughs> that, that sounds like a good thing no yes it sounds good but i think there's more room for improvement mm. because many people still don't understand why they are supposed to charge in cities they think that uh, because they buy whatever they are doing, the products from other markets, they're supposed to charge in dollars. For instance, when we got to uh, Silver Star Auto, the lady told us that, yes, they will be I mean, happy to charge in CDs and all that, but the vehicles were from Germany, and they have to charge in euros. It was only one of the vehicles, Suzuki, that they charge in dollars, and even that is also against 
the rules. So after probing, we found out that they had uh, an exemption. But the exemption they had was uh, in 2015. So it means it has expired. And my little engagement with the officials that I was with at the operations indicate that every year, if you have an exemption, so for instance, multimedia have an exemption to charge it's in dollars or mm. to quote currencies in dollars. After the end of the year, you may have to go for renewal. But this company, the Silver Star Auto, couldn't go for renewal because per what they showed to us, it's 2015, and they were warned that if they want it, they are supposed to go for it. And the Bank of Ghana will scrutinize them very well before giving them, if necessary. Right, so the corpus today were warned. What yes. happens after today if they are found to be uh, flouting the rules one more time? So like I indicated earlier, when we go the next time, we are not going to be friendly. We are going full force. So, uh, per By what that you the mean law, the Bank of Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean the Bank of Ghana. <laughs> per the law, mm -hmm. they, 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 you, you are entitled to either uh, imprisonment of not more than 18 months, you are punishable by that, and then also you could be uh, made to pay some amount as well. And that will hurt your business. So mm. you may not want to fall into that trap and like to pay. Right, and we need to point out the Bank of Ghana is undertaking this exercise uh, in order to stabilize the currency, okay. which e exactly. is affected so when uh, we price, price in dollars. dollars. So what, what have uh, officials of the Bank of Ghana been telling you about how important this exercise mm. is, so is to uh, stabilizing the currency, the local currency. So what we picked up from the operations or from the ground is that the CD is the only legal tender for this country. The moment you start operating in other currencies, it means you are devaluing the CD. And this will bring a negative impact on the CD. So if you are doing anything, it, so far as it is on the shores of Ghana, you are supposed to price in CDs, quote in CDs, and then also advertise in CDs. So those companies that were even advertising in dollars, but were taking CDs, they were also one. And they are also part of the corporate. It's not only the forage bureaus and the hotels, but even mm. household uh, housing agencies, real estate agencies. For instance, Broad Ghana, when we went to the Marina Mall, the guy told us that, yes, they, they know about this law, they've communicated to their bosses, but their landowner, their landlord, the owner of the building, has been insisting that they charge in dollars because those people who come for the building are coming straight from the airport. They assume that they're just coming into the country to do business and mm. they may not have enough CDs on them. So if they don't have enough CDs on them, you have to tell the person to pay the dollars and that is why they are charging the dollars. So over there, we gave him the uh, caution that, look, we know that you are coming with dollars, you have dollars on you, but there are so many forest bills, there are so many banks in this country. Get into any bank, get into any forest bill, change your currency into CDs and use the CDs to transact your business. At another point, we got a, there was a foreigner who has mm. no ID card or passport on him. He says he's from Sierra Leone, so he couldn't do the transaction. And we, we insist, I mean, the team insisted that if you want to change currency, you must have this document with you. So let right. today be your last time. You are not going to be allowed to transact. So, so where are they headed to from here? Yes, we won't announce that. <laughs> it will be, uh, it will be within. It's supposed within, to be a surprise. The, yes, it will be a surprise within the month. But you hear, you you hear about it. Yes, uh, Evan Sabute, thanks very much indeed. And I guess you can watch uh, what transpired there at the airport business enclave on Joy News Prime uh, when we come away with business. You see for yourself what happened. Thanks, Evan. Well, speak of the local currency. It would depreciate further in the coming months, ending the year at around six cities, thirty pesos. That is a projection coming from the Economist Intelligence Unit. We've got more in this report. Based on the Bank of Ghana's official quotes, as captured on its website, the local currency is today selling at around five cities, thirty pesos. However, the situation is different when it comes to what the commercial banks are offering to clients as our scans today show that one dollar is going for about five cities 50 pesos. It has been around five cities 49 pesos and five cities 51 pesos range over the past one week. This is more of a sign of some stability. So at this rate, if the Economist Intelligence Unit's prediction is anything to go by, then, in the next three months, it could go down further to reach six cities 30 pesos. The local currency has come under some pressure over the weeks due to the investor sell-off of the country's bonds and the pickup in demand for dollars to finance these imports.
The Bank of Ghana has also been on the market to equally meet the demands of banks. However, we cannot establish whether what's been supplied indeed met the demand. Market data suggests a pickup in dollar support for the banks over the past weeks. Some industry analysts would want to see the report by the Economist Intelligence Unit, EIU, as just a projection. This is because looking at the current reserve position of the Bank of Ghana and recent inflows from the Cocoa Syndication Loan, the central bank should be in a strong position to support the city. There are also concerns about whether the pressure on the city is backed by real demand or speculative activities. Recent Bank of Ghana figures show that total foreign accounts in the commercial banks ending last year stood at $4 billion. But are these monies meant for business transactions or some persons are just trying to use it to hedge against inflation? While well, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana has begun its 90th regular meeting to uh, review the economy, this meeting, which is crucial after the banking sector cleanup, will see the committee take decisions that would influence the cost of credit at the time that there is divided opinion as to whether the policy rate should be reduced or remain unchanged. George Rafi has more in the following report. We understand the city's depreciation and containing inflation rate are some of the issues that will dominate the meetings. The committee, which is chaired by the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, would also look at how these various developments in the economy would influence inflation rate and the required policy measures that should be implemented to contain the situation. Some of the issues that the committee will be closely monitoring are the recent fuel price increases, revised taxes outlined in the supplementary budget, transport fares, as well as how the pickup in the global oil prices could all impact on the local economy as well as the inflation rate. At this last meeting, the Bank of Ghana kept its policy rate at 16%, which is the rate at which it lends to commercial banks in the country. Economist Professor Eric Osei tells Joy Business it might be prudent for the Bank of Ghana to hold the rate at 16%. The key to ensuring that we have interest rate falling to ensure that it provides now resources for the private sector to invest will be to stabilizing the city because the city presents one of the biggest threats to inflationary pressures and all of that. And so uh, for me, to be able to anchor this expectation is ensuring stability in the currency. The committee is expected to announce its decision this Friday at a meeting with journalists as to whether it is going to hold the policy rate a 16% or bring it down marginally and how that could impact on the cost of credit in the country. Many would also be looking forward to the debt stock which was put at 200 billion Ghana cities ending May this year. And what about government's expenditure outlook as well as revenue? Uh, some more analysis on this. Joining us uh, is Karish Bhuti who is with Data Bank. Thanks for your time tonight, Karish. So what do you anticipate the MPC will decide on, we cut the race, uh, keep it unchanged or increase it. Um, good evening to your listeners. Um, we know Bank of Ghana is an um, uh, inflation targeting central bank. Uh, their policy choices over the year has been to anchor inflation within the target band of 8 plus or minus 2 percent. We have seen that for periods where there are substantial threats to that inflation outlook or things that could potentially tilt it outside the target band. Uh, they have chosen the policy actions or the policy option that actually helps to uh, forestall such occurrence. Over this period we're talking about, I think this year so far, inflation has been a bit volatile, um, moving up down to, I think, 9.1 and now back to 9.4. If you look at happenings uh, recently, with petroleum prices, with recent, recent tax reforms or the tax um, adjustments that we saw at the mid-year review, where petroleum prices are supposed to go up marginally because of the additions to the energy the recovery levy, and you see the revisions of, to the, the communication services tax. All of these are fed goods in the non-food basket. And then largely, our inflation so far has been driven largely by the non-food basket food inflation consistently has been coming down, but non-food is the one, the pressure zone now. That tells you inflation in Ghana is more of a monetary phenomenon now. 
than it was in the past. And so given these dynamics, it's likely that there is a significant threat to the inflation outlook going forward, which may knock it upward towards the upper band of the, the medium term target band. And that is not good for um, the goal of monetary policy of this year. And so I think with these threats developing to petroleum prices, we've seen recently there have been increases at the pumps, and we've seen that the oil, world oil market um, is also kind of prices are going up a bit due to the disruptions we're seeing from um, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia with regard to supply and all of that. So these dynamics will actually affect um, uh, petroleum prices. And then these, if petroleum prices up, we know it passed through to a lot of other sectors of the economy are kind of real. Uh, another thing may be the currency. Sadly, the city is depreciating against most of the major currencies. Uh, we are around 10% depreciation so far this year, which is the highest, I think, in the three-year or so tenure of this current government. And then the pass-through of currency depreciation to inflation was also a real possibility. So on this backdrop, I don't see a cut in the monetary policy rate, not at the September meeting, possibly not again this year. Uh, but I don't also see an increase because I feel the, the, the risk are balanced a bit. The upside risk plus the trajectory of inflation over time will balance out. And so the, the most appropriate decision, in my view, is a maintain at this policy meeting. And then probably not no 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 more cuts for the rest of the year. Okay, uh, I think that you you agree to some extent with the EIU, which also says that there is no room for um, a cut. Is also citing um, high inflation as a result of the depreciating CD uh, fiscal, uh, the slow pace of fiscal consolidation, as well as the uh, growth in private consumption. Uh, so uh, it appears we have a, a situation on our hands. Uh, how do we deal with these challenges which uh, sort of affect uh, the policy rate? I think it is more of an issue of assessing caution uh, rather than uh, any bad occurrence or some uh, bad development happening. I think at the stage we are, we're seeing pressures from all around, uh, pressures that are I would describe as momentary. If you see the development in crude oil prices, uh, prices have been largely down this year. Uh, for most part of the third quarter, it's been within the uh, upper 50s. Uh, we've seen this distortion that is moving towards the $70 again okay. because of what is happening in Saudi Arabia. And so over time, these distortions will normalize. Uh, right. We have seen also that the currency issues have been largely due to the lack of external presence on our market. And we've seen that the external headwinds have not favored us this year. So a lot of sell-offs along the line. Okay, Kari. I think those are the major reasons that um, we are seeing the current threats. Thank you so much, Courage Boutique there with the Data Bank and Economist Data Bank. Thanks for your perspective. And that's it for Business Live tonight. Thanks for watching. More news on our website, myjoinline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwa. We are back same time tomorrow.